So this is Sparky, uh, malnutrient poodle that also suffers from collapsing trachea along with some heart disease. And as we know, the collapsing tracheal cough is a pretty distinctive cough uh, that makes <coughs> us all very anxious. A shoes honking cough that's in spark, it can be able to be lightly stimulated with some light pressure on his windpipe. Um, with collapsing tracheal coughs, once the cough ends, typically they go back to breathing normal and acting normal. But during the episode, it's, it's not fun for anybody to watch it. And obviously it comes down to a quality of life issue that we try to work on with medicines and occasionally tracheal stents. Thank you. Hi, today's lecture is going to be on collapsing tracheas, which are pretty common in a lot of small breed dogs that we see, but also it can be known in medium-sized breed dogs and even Labrador retrievers, for example, as far as large breed dogs. So the trachea, or the windpipe, as I like to commonly refer to, is made up of collagen, rings, and collagen, and should be a relatively rigid pipe that brings air into the lungs. I kind of think of it as my marker, a relatively rigid pipe that has some flexibility. If you take a cross section of this trachea, it is made up of C-shaped cartilage and again collagen and these tracheal rings and a dorsal tracheal membrane on top or called trachealis muscle and air is inside. So again, think of it as we cut this marker and we're looking inside of it. But what happens in older dogs, and sometimes for example in Yorkies it never really hardens these tracheal rings, this membrane starts to sag down these tracheal rings made up of cartilage and collagen start to degenerate and this trachea starts to flatten. As it flattens and collapses down, the brain mistakes this for something being stuck in the trachea, like a foreign body, and induces a cough reflex to try to get this imaginary object out. But really there's nothing in there, it's the trachea collapsing on itself, so oftentimes we'll give cough suppressants to break the cough cycle. So remember the trachea goes all the way from here down to the middle of the chest called the carina. So let's say the thoracic cavity starts here, so it depends where it collapses, extra thoracic or intrathoracic, if we're going to see the cough on inspiration or expirations. And also remember, if the trachea collapses all the way, it gives us a cough. But if it kind of comes down and doesn't collapse all the way, it can cause some wheezing uh, and also sound uh, common like a patient with COPD or asthma. And it's kind of the same analogy if you go to whistle. You can't whistle with your mouth wide open. You have to make your lips smaller for a sound to come out. So as this becomes smaller, and the airflow through here is faster when your baby gets excited to see when you come home, the trachea is sucked down and induces a cough or some wheezing. So tracheal collapse um, typically is not life-threatening, but it can definitely affect our quality of life and controlling the cough is very important. In severe cases, we can actually come into this trachea and place a tracheal stent, where we will stent all the way from the larynx all the way down to the carina, and keep this trachea wide open. We usually don't recommend tracheal stents unless in severe cases where we have really exhaustive medical therapy, as the cost is obviously not cheap, and we try to save owners money first and foremost, but also no safe surgery is 100% successful, we usually tell our clients that the tracheal stent is about 85% successful. That means about 15% of the patients will still need quite a heavy medical therapy. So we try to save it as last resort, but it is a fun surgery for us to do. So hope this answers any questions about tracheal collapse and feel free to contact us with any questions. Thank you.